I do apologize about the audio quality in this video. It was beyond my control. There was a digger being used nearby and I had to try and filter out the low hum that it was producing. Hello, today is a video on how to take out the hard disk or replace the hard disk in this Dell Inspiron 5767, or sorry, Dell Inspiron 17 5767, otherwise known as Reg model. P32E and reg type P32E001 and Dell part number CYXJ4. And on the sticker, the sales sticker, it just says Inspiron 17 5000 series. So, turn the machine over, get a screwdriver, crosshead type thing, and undo every single screw on the underside of the machine. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know I like to keep the screws in the same uh, layout as they came out of the computer just in case any of them are slightly different sizes. When I go to put them back, I know where they came from. And already <clears throat> they are different sizes. That one there is a lot shorter than all the others. As is this one here, which is probably the um, CD drive screw. Now I've undone these two screws near the CD drive, I am going to slide the CD drive out, or DVD drive out, just so there's less stuff in the way when I take it to bits, or take the cover off. One thing that is very important to watch for is some really well hidden screws where the CD drive was, or underneath the CD drive. There are three of them and they use an absolutely tiny screw driver head. So I'm going to use a like a delicate watchmakery type screwdriver. And there is a tiny flat screw and there's two more of these along here but you will need a very small screwdriver if you are using the same screwdriver that you use for all the other screws that will not work or if you are making it work you're probably damaging these small screws and it will make it a nightmare for anyone else in the future to either uh, tighten or loosen those screws There are two screws missing on this one, these two, so I can't undo those. They're just going to have to uh, remain not there. So that's all the screws undone on the underside of the machine now. I'm going to flip it over. And take a spudger or a very thin knife or something similar to go down the front 
of the machine between the black bottom plastic and the palm rest. And then go along the sides. until you get to almost the back and you can see this whole thing's coming away now and let's do the other side so what you need to watch out for here is we've got these connectors the video connector and two USB connectors when we take this bottom panel off it's a good idea to hinge it uh, so that you're not putting pressure on these connectors. Um, so hopefully you'll see. I close that. The connectors are over this side. I put it down <clears throat> and they're still over there. So my aim here is to lift it from this side so that the connectors aren't put under pressure. So I'm putting my hand underneath and just gently wiggling And trying. There we go. <clears throat> to unclip the rest of that. And there we go. I can move it away that way so that this bit of plastic here, which the connectors are sat in, don't, don't pull that upwards and uh, potentially damage the connectors. So there we go. That's the underside of the machine is off. And we can get to the hard disk and battery, BIOS battery there, RAM and uh, in this machine there's one free RAM slot and the other stick of RAM which is in there is a single 8 gigabyte stick there. Cooler and fan and the CPU that's in this is definitely a BGA soldered onto the board CPU. You will not be able to change that CPU uh, without a rework station and it's just generally not going to be worth it. Wi-Fi card up here and some incredibly big brackets for the screen hinge. They're very nice to see. Quite often um, a lot of machines get fatigue in that part and the plastic all breaks to bits so uh, yeah, it's good that they've got a lot of spreading of the the load for the hinges there. Speaker connectors and the speakers and uh, there we go. So the hard disk is three screws, two on the left side, one on the right. And then careful when lifting up this drive because it's got a really thin, uh, I think, ribbon cable there. So don't just lift the drive up, you might end up ripping that, that cable. And gently, I may need to use a screwdriver for this. No, nope, there we go, it's managing it slightly. Gently detach the hard disk from that ribbon cable. And there we have it, there's the hard disk. In this one it was a Toshiba, uh, I can't see the capacity, oh no, one terabyte drive. And um, for those of you that do ask this quite regularly, the thickness of the drive is 9.4 or 9.5 millimeters thick drive at yeah, 9.5 I'd say. So 
So, time to take off the brackets. And just for safekeeping, I'll leave that in the machine itself. And there's the hard disk, so I now need to do some data recovery on this, and then I'll probably put another different hard disk into this machine if this uh, hard disk is unserviceable. So I uh, will hopefully film putting this back together. Okay, it's later in the day, and I haven't managed to recover, uh, well, managed to recover stuff from the hard disk but I haven't managed to get it back to be usable again and with the number of errors it certainly wouldn't be wise to use it. So delivered by the handy Amazon is a new SSD. So it's time to put this in. So if you're doing this, you will need to clone your old hard disk if your old hard disk is uh, readable and reliable or you'll need to use a memory stick to install Windows 10 from scratch or obviously whatever operating system you'd prefer to use. So I think it's going to be easier while I can see the connector to bend that over rather than try and do it in place where I can't easily see the connector and whether it's lined up correctly. There we go, clicked in successfully. That drops down onto these two pins here. And then it's the three screws. Time to put the cover back on. Once again, don't start with the side without the connectors. Try and slide it on over the connectors first. And then... <clears throat> and then push it down on the side with the fewer number of connectors. Just go around there, pushing it down, and also open it up and go round. Making sure that it's fully pushed down around the edge. Before we put the CD drive back in, we need to do these three really small annoying screws which are along where the CD drive would cover or DVD drive would cover I 
I can now put the DVD drive back in. And put the rest of the screws back in. If this video has been useful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the notifications turned on, but the subscriber numbers really do help.